So, yep, yeah, hello everyone. Uh, I'm recording this video to have a mock up, mock up video for the chapter of the work and energy for rigid body. And this video may take about two hours. And yeah, th this content will be in our final exam. So I hope you can manage time and, and study by yourself in this video. So the topics we have is work and energy for rigid body. Before the midterm exam, before the midterm exam, we have work and energy uh, concept for the, the particle. And today we have some add-on. If we need to consider the rigid body, instead of consider the, the kinetic energy from the velocity of a particle, we need to consider the effect of the rotation, the kinetic energy that store in terms of the, the rotational kinetic energy. But for the potential energy, for the gravitational potential energy, for the elastic potential energy, we still have the, the similar concept with the, the previous chapter for the, the particle. So today content, today content, as I mentioned, the, the significant difference between work and energy of the rigid body and work and energy of particle. The most important part is the difference in the kinetic energy. So before this, for particle, when we are not talking about the dimension of particle, we only consider the, the kinetic energy that store in the mass and consider only the effect in the translation of the mass and we store the kinetic energy of the mass multiplied by V square, one per two mv square. <clears throat> but if it if it's rigid body, and we need to consider the rotation. Uh, yeah, we have two possible case. The first one, we have one fixed point and consider the rotation about that fixed point. And we call this like fixed axis rotation. Today, we are talking about the kinetic energy for the fixed axis rotation. In another case, is general plane motion. General plane motion if we have a rigid body and this rigid body has its own velocity vector and it also rotates, it also rotates with omega. So yeah, we will see how can we obtain the corresponding kinetic energy to each three different case. And for potential energy, we still don't have uh, any change compared to for particle. So we just like review the concept. The work energy relationship, the work energy relationship the, 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 the work done by non-conservative force equal to the change in kinetic energy, the change in gravitational potential energy and the change in elastic potential energy, the work energy relationship, which you can apply this in the case of rigid body, but just this one, that need to be considered in deeply in detail for the effect of the, the rotation. <clears throat> so let's begin with uh, 
let's begin with the the kinetic energy the kinetic energy in this slide we have the translation the peel translation case this one and the fixed axis rotation for this one uh, we know that we know that hey on the rigid body when it has no rotation for a rigid body that have peel translation at any particle on a rigid body at any particle the kinetic energy of the any particle on a rigid body any small element will be one per two mass of that small element multiplied by the velocity magnitude of that element but for the total kinetic energy of the rigid body is the summation of the kinetic energy of any small of or the small component so we need to obtain the summation of kinetic energy of all the small component but luckily luckily without the rotation without the rotation at any single point at any single point on a rigid body they have the same direction and magnitude of velocity as the velocity of the center of gravity so we have vi of our particle or rigid body has the same magnitude of the vector at the center of gravity which means that which means that we can have one per two and have summation of mi <clears throat> and v i is equal for all the particle so v i is just only v and yes the summation of mass is equal to the total mass of the whole rigid body so the kinetic energy of the the rigid body without the effect of rotation can simply be written by one per two mv square the same as the one we use for a particle when we not have the effect of the rotation here the second case the second case this one is the fixed exit rotation the fixed exit rotation i'm going to say that i'm going to say that the kinetic energy of any single point <clears throat> any single point here any single point here if it have the distance from the center by ri by ri if, if it have the distance from the center by ri at that location if the rigid body rotate with omega about pi o the velocity vector will perpendicular to the radius and the magnitude of vi of any single point that far from the center by ri the velocity vector will have magnitude omega multiplied by r it means that the magnitude of the velocity at that point is radius multiplied by omega the kinetic energy of that single point is one per two mi and vi square 
but we know that we know that we know that we i we i is equal to r i omega and for the total kinetic energy of this rigid body is the sum of kinetic energy of any the small particle. So we apply the summation to one per two mi ri square and omega square. <clears throat> so we we know that we know that for a rigid body at any point on the rigid body when it rotate with omega at any point on the rigid body yeah we the omega can describe the motion of the whole rigid body the omega for any point we use the same omega which means which means we are going to write one per two of summation mi ri square and omega square omega can be brought outside the the summation because it's constant is the same is constant against any particle i and summation m i r i square summation m i r i square this one we define it as the moment of inertia about the rotation axis o the moment of inertia is equal to integral r square dm. So yeah, we have the small mass of any particle. We have the radius square of that particle. And by taking the sum, we have the, the moment of inertia. <clears throat> How about the case of the case of general plane motion? General plane motion. General plane motion has the combined effect, combined effect of translation of the center of gravity or the single point or the single point on the rigid body have this component of vector or the single point on the rigid body have the component of the velocity of the CG. And this similar to the idea when it's not rotated, when it's not rotated, any single point has the same velocity at the center of gravity. But if it rotated, if it rotated, the relative velocity between the point and that single particle or rigid body is obtained by omega and multiply by the <clears throat> the radius. So here at any single point, at any single point, uh, when we consider the effect of rotation, 
when we consider the effect of rotation, the omega of the rigid body multiplied by the distance rho will appear in the relative velocity. This is relative velocity of the point I with respect to point G <clears throat> is equal to rho multiplied by omega when rho is the distance measure from point I to the center of gravity. And the direction of the relative velocity is perpendicular to the radius, perpendicular to the radius, like this one. The direction of the velocity, the relative velocity, this vector is relative velocity of any point I with respect to the rotational axis O. This one is the relative velocity of any point I with respect to the center of gravity G. And the vector is perpendicular to the radius. So is this vector and the vector of the velocity of the CG is this one. And the relative velocity that any single point make with the center of gravity is this one. So the total velocity of any single point, the total velocity of any single point, the velocity of any single point need to be formed by the velocity of the center of gravity V bar or V of the G or V bar vector plus the relative velocity of that single point with respect to point G. <clears throat> So this one, if you see this uh, vector diagram, we have V bar for this vector. We have low, low I omega for this vector. And we can obtain by graphical method, by graphical method here, we can obtain the magnitude of VI. We can obtain the magnitude of VI by the law of cosine, the law of cosine. We know the, we know the angle, uh, <clears throat> the angle between the two vector the angle between the two vectors is theta. The theta means, the theta means, the theta means the direction between the relative velocity and the direction of V bar or the V of the center of gravity, theta is the angle between these two vectors. So by law of cosine, if we want to obtain the magnitude of V i, if we want to obtain the magnitude of V i, it's equal to, <clears throat> equal to, the magnitude of V bar square plus the magnitude of rho i omega square plus 
2 v bar rho i omega and cosine of theta cosine of theta and Mm -hmm. so of theta. Uh, this theta, this theta is depends on the component I. If we change mi to different position, if we change mi to different different position, the relative velocity of i with respect to g will change the direction, but the v bar still keep the same still keep the same direction of V bar. So the angle between rho i omega and V bar, the angle between these two vector can be changed depend on the i that we are consider. So, yeah, theta can be changed. The, <clears throat> the, the kinetic energy of any single particle on a rigid body is one per two of that small mass of the particle and multiply by v i square velocity of that particle square. Ah, I make one mistake for the, the law of cosine. I make one mistake. The magnitude of the total sum square is equal to the magnitude. Okay, you should see this. <clears throat> uh, you, you should see this picture. We have the angle between the two vector. We have A and B, A and B. And yeah, we have the same angle here. And the sum vector is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab cosine theta. So, yes, this component is equal to vi square, vi square. So the magnitude of vi vector is vi square. So yeah, vi square is equal to v bar of the center of gravity <clears throat> and the lower i, the radius depend on any single point, single particle on rigid body, rho i. Omega, the rigid body share the same, omega. And two, v bar, rho i omega, cosine, theta i, like this. And if we want to obtain the total, the total kinetic energy 
it means we need to obtain the sum of kinetic energy of the small particle. So the sum, the sum, if you apply the summation, you will have <clears throat> you have the summation of one per two mi and yeah, keep the same one first. V bar square plus rho i omega square plus two V bar rho i omega and cosine theta i. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. So when we think about applying the summation for the first term, when we apply the summation, we share the same V bar for any single particle or rigid body. So summation take the part only for the mass. We share the V bar. <clears throat> for the second term, for the second term, uh, yeah, be be careful that be careful that the mi and one per two is outside the parent, so mi need to multiply to all the terms inside here. So yeah, the second term will be one per two, and the summation of mi rho i square <clears throat> depend on the rho of a single particle or rigid body. And any point on rigid body share the same omega. So omega can be outside the summation. And for the last term, for the last term, we have one per two multiplied by two of uh, we we bar omega <coughs> we bar omega and inside the summation inside the summation one per two multiplied by two V bar and omega. Inside the summation, we still have M I, still have low I and cosine of theta I. <clears throat> but I want you to see something in the the picture in the picture here uh, the the angle theta the angle theta is the angle between the v bar and the Relative velocity, rho i theta, rho i omega. So it means that the rho i omega is perpendicular to the radius, and the angle that rho i omega we make with v bar is theta. So this angle, this angle is 90 degree minus theta. And if we set, if we set the coordinate, if we set the coordinate, that have the x axis and have the y axis. 
if you set the coordinate that have the x axis and y axis, the y i is the direction along the y direction, uh, which means we set the axis x along the direction of v bar, along the direction of v bar. It means that the direction of y is perpendicular to the direction of the v bar. With this idea, this angle here also has the magnitude of theta. This, this angle is 90 degree subtract by theta and it's the same with this angle. So finally, this angle had the same magnitude, theta. I just want to say that, I just want to say that the low i cos theta i, the low i cos theta i magnitude of low i cos theta i will be y i y i so again the total the total of the kinetic energy the first term summation of mass will be the total mass of the rigid body multiplied by the velocity of the center of gravity square. The second term, the second term, summation mi rho i square. And this summation mi rho i square is made about point G. Rho i is considered with respect to point G which means we are talking about the moment of inertia, about the center of gravity, about the point G and omega square. For the last term, for the last term, if you, if you know the, if you remember that uh, YCM, equal to one per m of summation, one per m of summation m i y i. <clears throat> the center of mass, the y position of the center of mass, the center of mass in the y axis, is equal to one per total mass multiplied by the summation of mi yi. So it means that it means that at the center of mass, at the center of mass, the summation mi yi, if we set zero at the center of mass. The summation m i y i will equal to zero. It means that you may have one particle. You may have one particle. No, no, one rigid body. And at the center of gravity, if you sum the mass above and beneath, above and beneath, you, you may have the mass above the G point and the mass beneath the G point. And the sum of M multiplied by positive Y 
and sum of the m multiplied by negative y. If you perform the summation about the g position, about the g position, the summation m i y i, we will have zero. Summation of m i y i about g will be zero. Summation m i x i about g also will be zero at the center of mass. So yeah, the third term here, summation m i y i gives zero. So the last term uh, don't have the value. So finally, finally, the the, the kinetic energy for general plane motion, we have the effect of translation one per two mv square and the effect of the rotation one per two i bar omega square. I bar is the moment of inertia, moment, of inertia about point G. Uh, this one, this one is one special case, is one special case. We said that for the general plane motion, for general plane motion, we suggest to use the point G as a reference point to consider V bar and to consider the moment of inertia about point G. But in some application, in some application, if you remember the concept of IC that we if you remember the concept of IC set V, if we have any particle and that particle at one instant, at one instant, it has zero velocity. The velocity of point C equal to zero at the IC set V position. It means that it means that one per two m v c square equal to zero at that moment. If we can find I C set v point on a rigid body, we know that at the point have zero velocity and don't have the kinetic energy for the translation. We may can have this alternative. The kinetic energy can be considered only by the effect of rotation about the IC set V point. Be careful about the moment of inertia. This one is compute about the, the IC set V point instead of the center of gravity point, it will be similar to this one. It will be similar to this one. For this rotation, it seems like pi O always be the center of rotation anytime. We can say pi O also I see set V, but it's not just only instant, but it's all the time. Pi O always be the fixed axis of the rotation. But for IC set V, at any instant, if that point have zero velocity, we can, we can compute the kinetic energy just only from the effect of the rotation. Okay, so review. 
reveal the potential energy and work energy relationship uh, before before that uh, hey if we talk about the work of force work of force and work of couple the work done by non-conservative force is equal to the summation of force vector dot product with dr and for the scalar form for the scalar form it f cos alpha when the alpha yeah if the the direction of the motion ds is measured in the horizontal direction and if the force make the angle with the direction of motion the the work done by the non conservative force is the dot product of the force and the 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 position vector the scalar form is f cos theta multiplied by the displacement in the direction of the force but for f psi f psi alpha it does not create any displacement in the direction of f psi theta so it's not have the work it have zero work in the vertical direction we have only the work in the horizontal direction the work done by couple is the integral of magnitude of the the moment and d theta which means hey if you have if you have a disc and we apply the moment and it rotate with d theta the the work done by the moment or the couple is the integral of moment d theta if you apply the moment to any system but it's not rotated in that direction the work will be zero if the direction of the moment is on the opposite direction to d theta we're going to have the negative value of mechanical work for example just example if if this rotation appear in the clockwise direction but you apply the moment to the the counterclockwise direction and in the sum you may assume you may assume the counterclockwise as positive it means that moment will be positive but delta theta delta theta in the clockwise direction will be negative so yeah the mechanical work when we apply the moment on the opposite direction to the rotation we may have the negative mechanical work so this is work how about the potential potential energy just a review uh potential energy for the gravity for the gravity the potential energy vg equal to mgh mgh but for mgh for particle it makes sense mgh for particle it makes sense because particle don't have dimension 
the edge can fully describe the edge can fully describe the position of particle with respect to the datum. How about the rigid body? The rigid body. What should be the height that represents the height of the rigid body? So for a rigid body, H will be the height of the CG. H bar will be the height of CG. For the elastic, elastic potential energy, for elastic potential energy, if we have linear spring, you, you should still remember one per two kx square for linear spring. For linear spring. One per two kx square for linear spring. When x is deformation and for torsional spring, for torsional torsional spring, elast uh, potential energy of elastic e elast elastic potential energy. If we have torsional spring, we have k theta with its torsional stiffness and theta square when theta is the angular displacement angular displacement and k is torsional stiffness. This is for torsion spring. Torsional spring. Again, the work energy equation, the work energy equation, work energy, the work energy relationship, the external, the work done by external force, non-conservative force, equal to the change of kinetic energy, the change in gravitational potential energy, and the change in elastic potential energy. If we talk about power, if we talk about power, power, uh, power is, power is not vector, sorry. Power is the change of energy by change, Power is the chain of the the work chain of work. Power is the chain of the work by time. Right, of chain of the work by time. So Uh, U is integral of F dot dr, right? Integral of F dot dr. So F dot dr. Yeah, for the for the power, power 
is just the dot product of the the force vector and velocity vector, the dot product of the force vector and the velocity vector. Here we have the force vector. And if we have the velocity vector, the power is the dot product. It means we have F cosine alpha multiplied by the, the magnitude of the V in the direction of motion. This is the, the mechanical power. It's the rate of change of the work by time. Okay, the first example, the first example, today we have two example. For the first example here, let's see the, the question together. So in this, uh, in this, we have the link, we have two link, and each link, each link have the mass of two kilogram. It means the mass of OA. and the link AB have the mass of two kilogram. And this is important term, centroid, radius of gyration, centroid, radius of gyration. Radius of gyration K, Centroid means measure from the about about the centroid location. We can talk about radius of gyration from any point on the link, but if we talk about about the centroid, it has this meaning: the centroid radius of gyration is equal to zero point zero six meter. What does it mean by this? By giving the centroid radius of direction. Uh, the moment of inertia about the, the center of gravity, the moment of inertia about the center of gravity is equal to one per two of mass multiplied by the radius of gyration square. The link can be the link can 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 be a complicated shape. The link can be a complicated shape, but if they provide the centroid radius of gyration, they give us one important information so that we can simply compute the moment of inertia about the CG position by one per two M and K bar square when K bar is the radius of gyration. So in this case, in this case, we have the link OA and link AB, and the link has mass of two kilogram and has the centroid radius of gyration, 0 0.06 meter. And when the link OA and AB rotate, it creates the vertical motion of the block B. The block B is slider 
inside the slot, it can only go upward and downward. It has the vertical motion along the vertical guide and the block B also has mass of three kilogram. The spring here had the stiffness, the spring stiffness, 6,000 Newton per meter. The spring had the stiffness. And at point O, we have the external moment apply constant torque, constant torque M equal to new 20 Newton meter constant in the counterclockwise direction. And we have the moment constant apply about point O. And this moment will rotate OA to the counterclockwise direction. And if you, if you imagine what's gonna happen is in the beginning arrangement, we have OA, B in this form. But when we rotate OA to the counterclockwise direction, what happened next is OA will form itself in the vertical and AB will be in vertical and we will lift the B up from the original position. Here is what going to be by this motion. But the problem said that, the problem said that the torque is constant, is constant again the chain of the theta. In the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning, the system starts from rest, starts from rest. It means in the beginning, the kinetic energy for initial condition, the total kinetic energy is zero. And theta for the beginning, theta equal to 45 degree. And what we need to do is we need to find the omega of the link OA, omega of the link OA when theta equal to zero, equal to zero. So if we need to, up, if we need to compute the, the work done by the moment, if we need to compute the work done by the moment, it's not that difficult because we have the constant moment against the delta of the theta. Constant moment against the delta of theta. So before that, before that, let's see uh, what happened to, what happened to the, the omega, the omega, of the, the link, the, we need to find the omega of the link OA, omega of the link OA, right? Uh, let's see the kine, kinematic relationship first. 
I'm gonna draw this picture again. Uh, we have we have the link and we have the second link here. And the link, the length is 0 0.2 meter, 0 0.2 meter. And theta is the angle that the link make with the vertical direction. And if the link rotate about 0 0.0 with omega, if the link rotate about 0 0.0 with omega, it's gonna create, it's gonna create the, the velocity at this point. And mm -hmm. the upper link, the upper link will also rotate about point B with omega. B, Omega B A. And what I want to say is the Omega will be equal in the magnitude because the length here is equal uh, wait a second, at point A, at point A, at point A, the velocity of point A The velocity of point A uh, wait. The velocity of point A contain two direction of the velocity. Uh, we have one in the horizontal direction and one in the vertical direction. If we have the, the velocity that perpendicular to the radius and for the horizontal component, for the horizontal component, it need to equal to the horizontal component of A with respect to B. So we, we A, is equal to VA is equal to VO plus VA with respect to O. And VA should have VAX and VAY and VO and we A with respect to O and direction of V A X will be to the left hand side. Direction of V A Y will be in the upward direction. It's gonna equal to V O that fixed 
and A with respect to O will depend on the angle, will depend on the angle theta. But it will perpendicular to the radius and the magnitude, magnitude, magnitude of A with respect to O is omega multiplied by the radius 0 0.2. And yeah, we have VAX and VAY. We also can relate the VA from VB and the B, the A with respect to B. Again, we A, we know that we A have the component of we A X and we A Y. So the magnitude is this one and the anchor is this one. So if you use this information, if you use this information, uh, VAX should have 0 0.2 omega OA and multiply by cosine of theta. VAY will be 0 0.2 omega OA and psi theta. And yeah, VA will be, VA will be, if, if we, we compose the VA as vector, we have direction to the left-hand side and direction in the upward with the magnitude of 0 0.2 omega OA cosine theta and 0 0.2 omega OA psi theta. And for VB, we know that VB only have the velocity in the vertical direction with the magnitude of VB. And A with respect to B, A with respect to B will be, will be make angle theta with the horizontal direction. And the magnitude will be omega, B A multiplied by 0 0.2. Mm. If you see, the horizontal, the horizontal component, if we see the horizontal component, we know that the 0 0.2 omega OA cosine theta should equal to 0 0.2 omega BA cosine theta. So yeah, the two link have the same length and the omega has the same magnitude, just different in, in direction. So we just can say that, we just can say that the magnitude of the omega OA equal with the magnitude of omega BA. And if we talk about, if we talk about the y 
position, the height or the, the y position of point B, the y position of point B, if we are talking about the distance by kinematic relationship, yb is equal to uh, 0 0.2 meter cosine theta. Zero point two cosine theta plus zero point two cosine theta. We will have the y or equal to zero point four cosine theta. The velocity, the velocity of the mass b. have only one direction along the y direction. So the first time derivative of yb, the first time derivative of yb, deep cost will be minus psi theta. And we need to have theta dot. By the way, if you see the picture, if you see the picture, what happened to theta dot? Uh, the theta is this angle. And if this one is rotating in the counterclockwise direction, it seems like theta dot is less than zero. And it makes sense because when we multiply by the minus, we're gonna have positive y dot, the upward velocity in the B mass. But these two things are not that important because we need to apply the word energy theorem that consider the initial and the final state. At the final state, that we need to obtain the omega. We consider when the theta equal to zero. When theta equal to zero degree, the velocity of the block B, when theta equal to zero, the velocity of block B equal to zero. Is that make sense? Is that make sense? If you consider the linkage like here, when it rotate from this to this, when it rotate from first to second, we are having positive VB in the upward direction. But after this condition, when it continue rotate, when it continue rotate, it will lower down, it will lower down the position of the block B, which means we are going to switch from the positive VB to negative VB. So at this moment, when theta equal to zero degree, the block B going to the top position, top dead center before it going down. So at that position, the velocity is equal to zero. Uh, the next relationship we are talking about, we are talking about the the velocity at the center of gravity, uh, the link OA, link AB, they have the general plane motion. They change the position of the 
center of gravity and they rotate about itself. So another important information is to, we need to know the velocity vector and magnitude of velocity of this point, the velocity of this point, when it passed through the, the zero degree position. If we draw this picture again like this, when it's in the vertical arrangement, we have point O, we have point A, and we have point B like this. And at this current situation, we A, will have only the horizontal component also also we let's say this is the g1 position and this is v1 vector this is g2 position and V2. G1 is center of gravity of link one, OA. G2 is center of gravity of link two. So we can compose V1 vector. Uh, I'm sorry. V, V1 is V1 bar and V2 bar. V1 bar is mean the magnitude of the velocity at G1 point. V2 bar mean the magnitude of velocity at G2 point. So V1 bar, V1 bar is equal to omega OA multiply by the distance between point O to point G1. And this is the magnitude of V1 bar. If you want to obtain the magnitude of V2 bar, V2 bar, by the vector equation, V2 bar, should equal to the vector of B plus the relative velocity of G2 with respect to point B. So at this current situation, we already know that at the top dead center, at the top dead center, PDC, theta zero degree, at the top dead center, the VB equal to zero, the VB equal to zero. So magnitude, direction may be upward, downward, but magnitude of VB is zero. The relative velocity, of G2 with respect to B. If you see B as a reference point and we have omega, omega VA, we have omega VA, consider B as the reference point, the V2 bar, the V2 bar, we have the direction totally in the horizontal direction to the left hand side, V2 bar. And the magnitude is omega about point B multiplied by the distance between point B and point G2. And Yes, what next? Uh, finally, finally, the V2 bar, the V2 bar.
as a vector, it has only v2 bar as a vector. It have only this magnitude to the left hand side and the magnitude of v2 bar. The magnitude of v2 bar is omega va multiplied by the distance 0 0.1. So V1 bar and V2 bar, V1 bar and V2 bar seems to have the same magnitude because from the previous analysis, we know that omega should be equal on the two links with the same length. And yeah, for the for the energy consideration, for the energy consideration, uh, let's check the work. Let's check the work. Work done by non-conservative force and moment force and torque, work done by force and torque. Uh, at this point, we should have the support force. We should have the support force at point O, but we have no motion at point O. So the force at point O, no, no, the work at point O is integral of the force by the displacement of point O. It will be zero because point O never move. The, the block has the normal force the block has the normal force. Normal force may be in this direction or in this direction, but we have no horizontal motion. We have no horizontal motion of block B. So, the integral of normal force also zero because we have no horizontal motion. We have no friction. We have no friction. We have no friction because the block can move freely in vertical guide. So we have no friction. And by the applied torque, this one is the important one. By the applied, by the applied torque, uh, by the applied torque, the work is equal to the integral of the magnitude of moment d theta from origin theta to final theta. But the moment is constant again the theta. The moment is constant again the theta. So the moment and the chain of theta is in the same direction. The magnitude of the work is the magnitude of the moment, 20 Newton meter, and the chain of the angle, uh, delta theta is from 45 degree to zero degree. The magnitude of the chain in the angle is pi per four. Radian. 
so the manager of the world, the manager of the world is about 15.71 June. Uh, what about the, the potential and the kinetic energy? Uh, the potential and kinetic energy. The, the the change of the kinetic energy, the change of the kinetic energy, the change of the kinetic energy. We know that at the initial state, the the kinetic energy will be zero, and at the final state, when the theta equal to zero degree. Uh, what happened? The first term for the kinetic energy, the first term for the kinetic energy is the kinetic energy in the link OA of the link OA. The chain of the kinetic energy, we consider the moment of inertia, the moment of inertia. The moment of inertia about the point O, the moment of inertia about point O, is equal to the, the moment of inertia about point O of the link OA is equal to the moment of inertia about the center of the gravity plus the offset, the effect of the offset. The effect of the offset is MOA multiplied by the distance L per two square. Uh, if you have a bar, if you have a bar and you have moment of inertia I bar like this, and you need to change the position to consider the, the moment of inertia. If you need to change the position and you know This distance, the moment of inertia about point O is equal to I bar plus mass multiplied by the distance square. But in this case, the moment of inertia about the CG, we already obtained from the, the radius of gyration. The moment of inertia about the center of gravity of the link OA is MOA. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry here. The, uh, the, I'm sorry, this, this is wrong. The moment of inertia 
just compute from the mass multiplied by the radius of gyration square. We don't need one per two. I'm sorry for this point. So it means in the problem, they give the MOA, the mass of the link OA, and they give the radius of gyration. So the moment of inertia is two multiplied by 0 0.06 square. This is the moment of inertia about the, the point G of the link OA. But we need to consider the effect of changing the position. So it needs to plus with the mass multiplied by the offset square. So what, what I'm going to, to do here is for the first link, for the first link OA, we have I bar. And we change the center to compute the moment of inertia. We plus by MOA and the distance and after it rotate when it pass through the top dead center when it pass through the top dead center and uh, at this situation, at this situation, we want to find the omega when theta equal to zero, but we still don't know that omega. We still don't know that omega at the final situation. But for the initial situation, we know that the system start from rest and omega initial equal to zero. One per two I omega square for initial and final can be formed like this for the link OA. How about the link? How about the link AB? The link AB the link AB has the link AB has two components. We consider link OA as fixed axis rotation. As fixed axis rotation. We consider link OA as fixed axis rotation. A big axis rotation, we consider the moment of inertia about the rotational point. For another link, the link AP, it translates and rotates. The effect of the translation in the kinetic energy is one per two of MAB. And the velocity final and the velocity origin. Velo velocity final, velocity final will be V2 bar square. Velocity origin will be zero. V2 bar square, what does it mean? V2 bar square means the velocity of uh, V2 bar. It means the, the magnitude of the, the velocity at the center of gravity of the, the link BA. So yeah, it still lives in the terms of the omega 
for this one. But the meaning is, is the velocity of this point G2. And the effect of the rotation of the link AB is measured about the center of gravity of the link AB, I of AB. bar at the center of gravity and don't need to have the offset because for the link AB, we consider the moment of inertia about the center of gravity. We don't need to consider the effect of offset this. So omega of the AB square for the final state and zero for the initial state. And now we have the kinetic energy for this, for this. And the last one is for the block. Kinetic energy of the block is nothing complicated. One per two M of the block and Final state will be square. Initial state, zero. And the numerical value, the numerical value, one per two. What is the, what is the I of the link OA? I bar of the link OA. I bar of the link OA. Is the mass of the link OA multiplied by the radius of gyration square to 0 0.06 square. And the second term, mass of the link of A to kilogram multiplied by L per two square. L is 0 0.2 meter. L per two is 0 0.1 square. And omega OA. Omega OA is the omega that we need to solve for. And we know that Omega OA and Omega BA are the same. So let's say just Omega for OA and AB, just, just, just call it Omega. How about the numerical value? of the link AB. Link OA is fixed axis rotation. Link AB is general plane motion, GPM. General plane motion, this one, GPM. Uh, the numerical value, the numerical value, we have one per two. The mass of the link AB is also two kilogram. And V2 square, V2 is composed from the 0 0.1, this this can multiply by the omega, omega BA, omega OA, and omega are the same. So here is 0 0.1 omega and square. and 0 0.1 omega and square. And this term, one per two, 
I bar of A B, I bar of A B is the same with I bar of O A. It has the same mass and same radius of gyration. So mass two kilogram, radius of gyration 0 0.06 square. And the omega square subtract by zero. How about this one? This one mass of block B, mass of block B is three kilogram, three kilogram. But do you have any idea for the velocity of block B? We already proved that we already proved that uh, at this moment, at this moment, at the top dead center, we don't have the velocity of the block B. We don't have the velocity of the block B. It becomes zero. So it seems like we have in the terms of omega square, we have the terms of omega square. You will check by yourself, use calculator to compute this, but we can form the delta T or the change in kinetic energy as a function of omega square. How about the change in the gravitational potential energy, gravitational potential energy? We have mass of the link OA multiplied by G and the change of height of the center. of G1 and G2. So if we have height one final state and height one initial state. And we have mass of the link AB, G, and height of the link, link AB, height of G2 final state and initial state. And we have the mass of the block B, G, and the height of B, final state and height of B, initial state. So yeah, G are the common term. G are the common term. Uh, G are the common term. Inside each term, mass OA, two kilogram. And the height, at final and the height at initial, in the final condition, in the final condition, when the link are in the vertical, G1, G2. G1 has a hundred millimeter far away from the ground for the final state. For the initial state, when the theta is 45 degree, when the theta is 45 degree, the height, the height of the G1 
is 0 0.1 cosine 45 degree. And for the mass AB, two kilogram, the final height of the G2 is 200 plus 100 will be 300 millimeter. And if we compute in the original, in the original situation, this one will be 0 0.2 for size 45. And this one, will be 0 0.1 cosi, no, no, psi, uh, psi of cosi, theta, theta. Okay, cosi still works, cosi 45 degree. So yeah, the height of the CG of the link AB also 0 0.3, Cosi 45 degree. For the block B, for the block B, the mass of the block B is three kilogram. Final height, final height of block B can be reference to uh, 0 0.4 meter. And before, before the motion, the height will be 0 0.4 cosi 45 degree. That's it. And yes, the numerical value, we, we have the numerical value here. The delta Vg, the gravitational potential energy is 5.747 Joule. How about the elastic potential energy? The elastic, elastic potential energy, the delta, of elastic potential energy is one per two of the spring stiffness. And we have the delta X at final condition and delta X at the initial condition. One per two, the spring constant is 6,000. 6,000. The delta X at final, what should be the delta X at final? Come to see this information. When at the top dead center, at the top dead center, the distance measure from point O to point B at the top dead center, the distance will be 400 millimeter, but we need to plus by 50 millimeter for the block dimension. We need to plus by 50 millimeter for the block dimension. But the distance between the point O and the spring is just 400 millimeter. It means that at the top dead center, at the top dead center, we're gonna complex the spring by 50 millimeter. We're gonna complex the spring by 50 millimeter. And at the initial condition, at the initial condition, 
Yeah, you may try to confirm whether the spring is uncompressed or not. 0 0.4 multiplied by cosine of the 45 degree should less than and, and plus 50 should less than 400 millimeter. And yeah, it should be uncompressed, I think. It should be uncompressed. So here we have 7.5 Joule. So uh, the work energy relationship, the work equal to the delta T plus delta Vg plus delta Ve, right? And you compute the work here. Okay, uh, work delta T, delta Vg, delta Ve, work is 15.7 June. Should equal to the delta of the, the kinetic energy, 0 0.0272. And, and, and omega square unknown plus the uh, delta Vg, delta Vg 5.747. And the last one is the delta Ve, delta Ve, the elastic potential energy. So solve for the omega, solve for the omega. For me, I compute the magnitude of omega to be five, uh, nine point five, one. Mm -hmm. And this omega will be the magnitude of omega of the OA and also magnitude of omega of the BA. We have the same magnitude. So that's it for the, the first example. Uh, yeah, I, I will continue the second one. And let's see, let's see, read it together for the, the second example, what happened here. Uh, yeah, I have one minute break. Well, now at the recording time, it's almost 2 a.m. Okay, in this example, in this example, we have double wheel. And again, they give the information of the radius of gyration. They give the information of mass and radius of gyration so that we can compute the, we can compute the, moment of inertia. 
about point O. The circle, the, the double wheel is, is rolling on an inclined plane. They give the slope of the inclined plane and the wheel roll without slipping, roll without slipping. Where they are is roll without slipping. But one important part is they hook the spring, they hook the spring with a rope and hook about the wheel, but they are not hooking the spring on the outer rim of the wheel. They hook it at one radius 75 millimeter, but the wheel itself has the radius of 200 millimeter. So the challenge to us is we know that it's raw without slipping and what should be the relationship between the change of the the change of the the CG position, the change of the pi O position, and the change in the delta X of the spring. Here is one challenge to this problem. So the spring, oh, the system is released from rest, from rest. It means in the beginning, we have C low velocity, it's begin from rest. But when it begins, when it begins, the spring is already stretched with 0 0.05 millimeter deformation. We have the spring stiffness and we know the initial deformation. So we need to compute the maximum velocity at point O. This means maximum traveling speed, translational speed of the, the center of gravity during the motion. Yeah, if, if you try to think, if you try to think the system has the inclined plane, we have the spring that already stretched and we release it from the rest. And with the, with the kinetic energy that's stored in the elastic component in the spring, we will transform the, the stretch spring, the elastic uh, potential energy in the spring, we will transform the energy to the vertical, uh, the potential energy, the gravitational potential energy, because when it moves, it's gonna change, it's gonna lift up the level of the, of the CG, the spring energy will be transformed into the change in potential energy, the gravitational potential energy, and will transform, will transform to the, the velocity. It means will transform to the kinetic energy from the rest, we have zero kinetic energy, but after it moves, it has the combination effect of the rotational and translation of the center of gravity. So yes, the kinetic energy need to be considered for the translation and the rotation, the combined effect of this. Uh, what does it mean by by roll without slipping. What does it mean by roll without slipping? Uh, we have the slope. Okay, 
uh, this system, this system, what they give in the problem? They give mass 10 kg. The radius of gyration about 0.0, .0 0 0.125 meter. The spring stiffness, 600 Newton per meter. The, the play uh, stretch of the spring is 0 0.225 meter. What we need to find is velocity of point O max. The speed of point O max. And the important assumption is roll without slipping. Roll without slipping. OK. Uh, check the slope here, the slope. From the slope, actually, we have five, one, and we should have the angle, right? The, the, the slope should be up 10, one per five. And I already compute it for you. It's about, 11 degree. Uh, we have the circle <clears throat> and the circle change the position of the center from O to O plum, from O to O plum. And yeah, it change the height It depends on it depends on how much it moves along the horizontal no, no the inclined plane. It depends on how it translates from the inclined plane, but but uh, hmm. Let me think. Uh, from row without slipping, row without slipping. From row without slipping, the velocity of point O. Should equal to the radius, external radius, multiplied by the omega of the rotation, right? For the row without slipping. And if we have the friction, if we have the friction during the, the motion, the work done by the friction. The work done by the friction should equal to zero by the assumption of rho without slipping. We can relate the velocity at point O directly with the omega. And the work done by the friction should be zero. And This picture is not that good, but uh, let's see another picture like this. I mentioned in the beginning that, hey, one important challenge to this problem is if, if the circle move along the inclined plane, we have the spring, we have the spring that attached 
to we have the spring that attached to the internal ring, the inner ring of the the wheel. So we have point O and the ring may be attached at point B, at point B. Uh, my, my question is, my question is, hey, if we have the displacement, if we have the displacement along the inclined plane, if we have the displacement along the inclined plane, And if this displacement have the magnitude of y, if this displacement have the magnitude of y, how can it affect, how can it affect the delta x of the spring, the delta x of the spring? If you see this picture, assume that if the wheel traveling, traveling to this direction, now we are going to find the relationship between the displacement on the horizontal or on the inclined plane and the change in the diffraction of the spring, the delta x. If we see this picture, if the center moved from O to O plum, if the center moved from O to O plum, the distance between O and O plum is described by Y, magnitude Y. It means that the theta, uh, O move to O plum, B rotate from B, rotate in the the counterclockwise direction, B move to B plum. And at the center here, the angle is delta theta, the delta theta. We can relate the angle, we can relate the angle with the magnitude of the displacement of the center, right? Delta theta, is the displacement dy by the radius displacement dy by the radius 0 0.2 simple we can relate the displacement by the angular displacement to the linear displacement on the inclined plane by the radius of the wheel but how about delta x, the change in the diffraction of the spring, the change in the diffraction of the spring. The change in the diffraction of the spring is the combination of the length that O move to O plum and combine with the effect of rotation, combine with the effect of rotation. The effect of rotation here, the effect of rotation here is delta theta multiplied by the smaller radius of the inner ring. Delta theta multiplied by 0 0.075 meter. But we already relate the delta theta with y. So y plus 0 0.075 dy by 0 0.2, 0, 0 and multiply by y again. So it is simply b 
2.275 divided by 200. Yes, of y. <clears throat> so it means that, it means that if the wheel travel on the inclined plane with the, the distance y, the delta x, the spring deformation will change by bigger than the distance y. Uh, you may, instead of checking from this, uh, you may, you may think about, you may think about the motion, the infinitesimal motion, infinitesimal, the, the very, the motion with very small angle. We have, we have the radius, we have this radius 200 and plus by 75. 75. So by the velocity profile at this point, V equals to zero because it's grow without slipping. V equals to zero. Uh, at this point, if we have the forward velocity, at this point, if we have the forward velocity, y dot. At this point, that connect to the spring, that connect to the spring. For a very small angle, we can, for a very small angle, we can generate the velocity profile. We can approximate the velocity profile like this from the assumption of low without slipping zero and we have y dot and we have this one that affect the delta x dot so the delta x dot we can use the the similar triangle we can use the similar triangle so we can see that hey the chain in delta x can be related to uh, 275 divided by 200 of the the y displacement. Yeah, they keep the same. They keep the same result. This one may be simple based on the the very small angle consider at very small angle and relate the velocity. But for the displacement at the big angle, yeah, you can integral the velocity and it's gonna keep the same result like this. But to make you clearly understand, I'm not sure this one helped you for better understanding or create confusion, but they have the same result. So now we can relate the y displacement on the inclined plane and the delta x that change the deformation of the spring. So uh, we going to consider the motion of the wheels like general plane motion again, general plane motion again, about point O and the energy function, the energy function, the change in energy will be computed as a function of y, as a function of y, measure from the begin, the initial position. So in this problem, u is equal to zero. 
no non-conservative force. That created the work. We have only friction as one non-conservative force, but it's raw without slipping. So friction doesn't create any displacement. So work done by external force. Work done by external force zero. Delta T, the change in the the change in the kinetic energy for the general plane motion, for the general plane motion, the kinetic energy is one per two m v bar square plus one per two i bar omega square. For the final, no, no, not for the final, for any y condition, for any y condition, we are going to, we are going to derive the delta of the kinetic energy as a function of y, as a function of y. So that we're gonna see at which y it can move with the maximum velocity. At which y it's gonna move at max maximum velocity. So this is at y, at any y. For the zero kinetic energy, uh, the initial initial kinetic energy is zero. So let's relate this to the, the numerical value that we know. The mass, the mass of the wheel is 10 kilogram. The radius of gyration 0 0.125. Mass is 10 kilogram. The V bar, the velocity of point O is related to the omega. The velocity of point O is related to the omega by the radius multiplied by omega. And for the rotation, for the rotation, the moment of inertia is mass multiplied by the radius of gyration square. The mass multiplied by the radius of gyration square. And omega square. and zero. So yeah, we can we can we can relate we can relate delta T in the terms of omega and multiply by one constant coefficient. The coefficient The coefficient, and this is the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy. How about how about the the gravitational potential energy, delta V G. The gravitational potential energy is equal to mass multiplied by G and multiply by the change in the height. So if this one change the center from O to O plum and travel by Y, 
the height will change by y psi gamma. Gamma is the angle of the slope. And initial height at data is zero. So uh, the mass 10 g and y psi 11 degree. So yeah, it's just one constant multiplied by y. One constant multiplied by y. How about the elastic? Elastic. The elastic potential energy is one per two k delta x square. But delta x will be delta x will be the you you should know that you should know that we have the plea stretch. We have the plea stretch. And then when it travel by y, when it travel by y, we reduce the stretch length by delta x, right? The origin stretch length is delta x zero, 0 0.225 meter is already pre-stretched, but if the wheel move by y displacement we reduce we reduce the delta x from the original one we reduce it from the the original one so at any y at any y displacement the stretch length of the spring begin from delta x zero. And it depends on how much we travel by y. If we travel with a big y, we, we how to say, we reduce the stretch of the, the spring. It seems like this is the original length of the, we, we should see this, okay. This is the original length of the spring. With this, with this, delta x equal to zero. With this delta x is equal to zero. The ha what happened now is here the spring already have delta x zero because it's stretching. Under stretch, we have delta x zero. But if the if the wheel travel with the positive y, what happened is we are reducing, we are we are creating this distance, we are creating this distance. And this distance, this distance is a function of y. Is two seven five dy by 200 of y. So at any y, at any y position, at any y position, the 
the spring will be under the stretch by delta x zero subtract by subtract by. 275 dy by 200 of y of y and square and the original the original uh, potential energy is delta x zero square before the motion before the motion the spring have the full stretch like this delta x zero but at any y at any y we reduce the stretch length of the spring by the displacement y so here is the change in the kinetic energy. The numerical value, the numerical value, one per two, K is 600. K is 600. And, and delta X zero, delta X zero, is 0 0.225 minus 275 per 200 of y and square. And delta x0 is 225 square. Mm -hmm. And We have 300 here. We have 300, oh, we have 300 here. And inside the parent, we have 0 0.225 square subtract by 2, 0 0.225 and uh, 275 divided by 200y and plus 275 divided by 200y square and subtract by 0 0.225 square and yet yeah, this has the same magnitude so we again we we compose we compose the delta we elastic by the, the, the polynomial or the two, the polynomial or the two with the coefficient, coefficient minus 185, 6, 2, 5, y, and y square and yes the the origin not the origin the equation the work energy the relationship the work energy relationship the last step we need to do uh, Okay, the last step is, the last step is the work done by non-conservative force equal to the delta kinetic energy, delta Vg and delta elastic potential energy. The work is zero, right? 
no work done by external non-conservative force. The other T is one constant multiplied by omega square. The potential energy depends on the displacement y along the inclined plane. And the elastic, elastic potential energy, elastic potential energy is these two terms. One eight five point six Y and five six seven point two Y square. Okay, so by combine the terms, by combine the terms, we have. 0 0.278 omega square and subtract by 166 point, point, yeah, point 0.4 y and y square. Mm -hmm. And Okay. Uh, omega square. Omega square is equal to omega square is equal to uh, now. Now we compose this equation that relates the omega to the displacement y. If we need to find the maximum speed, if we need to find the maximum speed, it means we may need to find the maximum omega. We need to find the maximum omega. The idea that we need to find the, the maximum omega as a function of the displacement y. We don't know in which y displacement we can get the maximum speed, we can get the maximum omega. So to obtain the maximum omega square, we dip it by y and we are gonna make it equal to zero. So dip omega square by the y, dip omega square by the y is equal to phi, 98.4 and uh, two of these will be 4080.6 y and this should be equal to zero so that we can have the maximum or maybe minimum of omega but in this case it should be the maximum one so the y for max omega, y for max omega is equal to uh, 598.4 dy by 0.6 meter. It means that, hey, it's gonna travel for it's gonna travel for about 14 
0.6 centimeter and it's gonna reach the maximum speed and at that point at that point if you know why if you know why if you know why substitute into this equation we should obtain omega we should obtain omega and if we want v this also will be omega max omega max and v max is omega max multiplied by the radius the big one the, the big the, the outer radius so the v max is 1.3 meter per sec that's it okay we're done with the work and energy theorem and i'm gonna stop sharing and i'm gonna stop recording now it's half past two am for this record okay thank you